Hey everyone, thank you so much for being here today. My name is Denise. I'm also known as Hey Wig Sister on Instagram and Facebook. Today I am here to bring you episode 7 of our new wig wearer series. In this episode, we're going to talk about how to store your wigs. What should you do to them before you take them off and hang them up or put them in a box? and where should you store them, both for short-term and long-term storage. So if you're curious about my take on this topic, then please stick around for the rest of this video. All right, everyone. So this is, we're getting to the end of our new wig wear series, and this is a topic that I see questions on all the time. So I'm gonna take you through some of your options for storing your wigs, and I'm gonna tell you what I do with my wigs. Before I do that, though, I wanna tell you that I have on Girl Mono in the color Saffron Red Rooted. That's an Ellen Villa wig. Ellen Villa Girl Mono and Saffron Red Rooted. It is fall and I am pulling out all of my auburns and my reds and I just love, love, love Girl Mono. And this one in particular is quite fabulous. All right, and oh, I should probably tell you guys, so this shirt, every time I've ever worn this shirt on video, I get a million questions. So I got this from a website called Ellie and Grace, I believe. I can link that in the description. I'm not affiliated with them. I don't get anything from them. I just really, really love their shirts and this in particular, this style. I've actually lost 30 pounds in the last six months and it's really big on me. So I'm considering getting another a smaller size because I just love this shirt so much. So if you're curious, that's what that is. All right, let's move on to this video. So when you're storing your wigs, you have a lot of choices and you can get as creative and crafty with it as you'd like. I have seen so many cute ideas for storing wigs in closets, in corners of rooms. I mean, just really fun things. But I have a couple of cautions for you and a, a couple of things that I do, which I think has made a really huge difference on how long my wigs last and stay feeling good. So I'll, talk, I'll tell you about a mistake that I actually made when I first started wearing wigs and how I actually discovered the method I use now. So when I first started wearing wigs, I used to store a lot of my wigs out in the open air. I would put them on styrofoam wig heads and uh, or hang them upside down from the towel rack in my bathroom. I think at one point I had like 25 wigs like all around in our bathroom. We, in our old house we had a really big bathroom and my husband used to complain all the time because he'd go in the middle of the night to go to the bathroom and inevitably be frightened by one of those styrofoam heads. Um, but something I noticed at the end of the first winter, so I started wearing wigs in September, and at the end of that winter, I noticed a lot of my wigs were feeling really dry. And I was really disappointed. You know, I didn't really attribute it to my storage method, but I just thought, wow, these wigs don't last very long. And a lot of them I, had, I hadn't really worn. Um, and so I was really, really upset about that but I realized that in Minnesota here we have incredibly dry winters and then with the heat being on all winter long and the doors closed up I mean the humidity level in our house is super low and if you live in a state that's really dry in the winter and you know you get like the static electricity you know what I mean and I, I realized that the open air was just far too dry for the wigs to be stored out in especially with the heat going on and off all, all day long. So after that, I started storing the majority of my wigs in their boxes and only leaving out the wigs that I was currently wearing. You know, maybe I was rotating, you know, three to five or six wigs at a time because I do change up my wigs every day. Uh, so that's what I would leave out. But the rest I put in their boxes. That made a humongous difference. And I have not dealt with abnormal drying out of wigs since then. Um, so I encourage you to not store a ton of wigs out in the open air all the time, especially if you live in a dry climate. But I think even in humid areas or even if you humidify your house, I think just the open air with um, the HVAC going on constantly on and off, cycling on and off with dust that may be in the air and some of our homes are dustier than others. I just don't think overall it's a good practice to keep your wigs out. 
And that's my personal opinion. I know a lot of people do it and they don't experience any issues. But if you are experiencing abnormal dryness of your wigs, especially wigs that you hardly ever wear and you're keeping them out, I would ask you to try putting them in a box of some sort and see if that fixes the problem. Now, once the fibers get dry, I'm not sure how easily you can get them to go back. Uh, so, you know, you might have to experiment with a new wig to make sure that that works for you. But just, just please take it from me from experience. I think that is the wisest method. So what do you do? How do you store them? I'm going to show you a couple of things that I do. And then I, you know, I, it, I'm hoping that we have wig sisters who will leave some comments and share what they do, which will give you hopefully lots and lots of good detail. So number one, you can just store the wigs in the box that they came in. That is what I did up until we moved into this house where I have a lot less storage space. I just kept all the boxes and stored them right in their box. Especially curly wigs, it can be really helpful to store them um, wrapped up in the netting that they came in in their box because then you can keep these curls intact longer and not have gravity impact them. So one of the things I've read about a lot is if you keep wigs on a wig head or store them upside down hanging, that the gravity will eventually relax the curl. And that sort of makes sense to me. I haven't really experienced that myself, but like I said, unless the wig is in current rotation, I have not been keeping them out. Now, let's say you have some storage challenges and keeping them in the boxes that they came in isn't really feasible to you because maybe your collection is quite large or maybe it's not, you just don't have a lot of storage. Well, I think you have a couple of options. Something that I transitioned to since moving into this house was I stopped storing them in their original boxes and I started grouping either styles together or brands together in larger Tupperware containers. And I have a couple of examples for you. So one of my examples is I just have this size. I was able to find someone selling like 20 of these on Marketplace uh, one day and I just bought them all up. And so I have a whole bunch of these and this one I happen to have my girl monos in because I have so many girl monos and that I just made a label and put it on the front so I know what's in this box. And then inside I have each of my girl monos in a Ziploc bag and I just put the tag right in there with them so I can quickly go through it and find the girl mono that I want. This has been working great for me. I was hesitant to put my wigs in Ziploc bags for a while, and so far I've had no issues. Um, a couple of things you could do though, because you know, these, the plastic could theoretically create some static electricity in here. So two things that you could do would be number one, keep the, uh, wrap the, um, Tissue paper that wigs that often come in the box with wigs, keep that and wrap your wig in the tissue paper and then stick it inside here. Another option would be to buy some dryer sheets. You can use unscented if you'd like and just stick a dryer sheet in with uh, your wig and then that way it can not only keep it fresh, but it can help cut down on static electricity. I know a lot of wig sisters do that. I haven't really gotten around to doing that, but if I start to see any issues with my wigs, then I definitely will. Another option would be to get the smaller shoebox sizes. So I found a bunch of these uh, on clearance somewhere and I bought a whole bunch. And so this I, I have just like, I have my, um, I have a couple of delectables by the, the wig company, it's been discontinued. And so I just have both of those in here. These will hold maybe one or two wigs depending on the length of the wigs and the volume. And so you're not going to store a lot in a little shoebox, but it's, it's a, an attractive way to do it. And it, especially even if you have a lot of storage space, having all of the manufacturer's boxes isn't always the most efficient use of that space because they're all different sizes, even within the same brand. I know Aesthetica, some of them are in long boxes, some of them are in shorter boxes. I have a, a couple of Oceans and they both came in different length boxes. And it's so frustrating when you're trying to have it look, you know, decent on the shelf. So that could be a solution for you. I know some places you can get a stack of them like for, you know, less than a dollar a piece. So it is an option. 
I do know some wig sisters that store their wigs in Ziploc bags and then they stick them in a file cabinet and sort of like files and maybe they even have like the folders and you've got your labels so you can just rifle through to find the wig that you're looking for. If you have drawer space where that is feasible, that's also an option for you. And so that to me is covering like the long term storage. If you've got wigs that you're not currently wearing, maybe you've stored them away for the season, then I would find a box system or a closed system that works well for you, whether it's big totes that have Ziploc bags in them, smaller, uh, smaller shoebox type totes, a filing system. I think Ziploc bags and some sort of tote system is great and a lot of us can sort of figure out where to store those. I would encourage you to store them in more of a climate controlled environment. So here in Minnesota, out in the garage probably isn't the best place just because it can be 120 degrees in the garage or it can be minus 30 degrees in the garage and so that's a lot of temperature fluctuation and so I'd, I'd be hesitant about that. I don't know that it will damage the wig but I'd be hesitant to do that and so what do you do before you store your wig away well first of all I would recommend you wash your wig if you're going to be storing it away for long term I don't always do that personally because I don't like to wash my wigs a lot so if I have only worn that wig a few times I'm probably not gonna wash it would it be smart for me to wash it Probably because chances are, you know, there's dirt, there's sweat, there's all kinds of stuff, even after a few wears. And you might not want that sitting on the wig for a year, but, uh, you know, so it's probably smart to wash it. I don't always do that. Um, and I don't usually spray my wigs with any product. I've said this in other videos. I hardly use any product on my wigs. I just do not like to use product. They, they don't absorb the product. So it's not benefiting the wig overall. It's coating the fibers, which if you're struggling with tangling or frizzing, that could be helpful. But uh, other than that, I don't see a lot of reason to spray wigs with product. So unless you're, again, detangling the nape of a wig, absolutely. So I have a couple of products that I have on hand. I actually have a lot more than this because I've, I've tried other things. But since I don't spray my wigs very often, I'm not the best person to give you guys impressions of product because I just don't use it a lot. But these are two that I recommend. Simply Stylin, Silicone Spray, and Aesthetica's... Um, uh, revitalize and shine wig mist. This to me is more of a refresher than anything else. It smells really light and fresh and I will spray my wig sometimes just to refresh the smell. This one is great if you've got serious ta tangling issues or if you have a super curly wig and the curls are starting to get frizzy, then this could be really helpful to spray on your hands and then work through the curl. This Girl Mono I've had for quite a long time. I've only worn it maybe 10 times. I don't think I've actually ever washed this one and I honestly don't even think I've ever sprayed anything on it. I just don't find that's necessary. If I have to refresh these curls, I will just spray it with water and scrunch it up and, and call it good. So I really don't think you need to spray your wigs with a lot of product even before you go and store them away. So. Do that if, if, if you feel good about it, but my experience, I've had a lot of success with wigs lasting and looking great with really hardly ever using product on them. And so that's the long-term storage. So what about shorter-term storage? Well, this will work uh, for even short-term storage. I This Girl Mono, I just pulled it out today because I just did a Mega Girl Mono review today. I wanted to just finally get an updated review of Girl Mono out there. And so I reviewed all uh, six colors that I have. And this one was in the box. She's been in the box for a year. All I had to do was go like this, fluff her up. I mean, I did put a couple clips in her just for this video, but I didn't even spray her with water. I just fluffed her up and shook her out and put her on and the curls are just fine. So storing, and she's been stored in a Ziploc bag in that tote I just showed you. It's not gonna create terrible box hair if you put it in there 
um, and it's already sort of been fluffed and styled the way you like it. I don't see any reason for you to worry about storing it that way and then pulling it out the day you want to wear it. Um, that's just my two cents about that. And I've had, you know, I've been doing this for a little while now and I haven't had any issues with bad box hair from storing inside a tote like this. I don't cram pack them in there. I actually personally get rid of all the packing. I don't put like tissue paper in the cap. I don't, you know, I really don't do a whole lot, but just kind of put it in the Ziploc bag and call it good. Wig stands, though, that's another option for you if you uh, don't want to stick it in a tote and it's in current rotation, you can store your wigs on wig stands. This one is one of those plastic collapsibles. This isn't actually a really tall one, so this is a good one for long hair. If you wear longer hair, shoulder length or longer, this is a great one for that. And I'll link in the description this one that I got on Amazon. Um, they make these in a shorter version, and so those are great for wigs like this or short wigs so you can absolutely use a wig stand if you've got the space to put wigs on a wig stand for a long time I, I used styrofoam heads and I have since gotten rid of all of my styrofoam heads for multiple reasons my first reason is I don't have room I have nowhere in this house I can store wigs on a counter so I, I cannot use this option the only reason why I would even use this and so I've kept a few of them is if I wash a long wig and I want to dry it upright then I will dry it on one of these because you get the airflow all throughout um, another reason why I don't like styrofoam heads is because uh, again you're not getting any airflow in your wig it's just sort of sitting on the styrofoam head I'm I just like my wigs to air out after I've worn them and then if it's not in current rotation then I'm storing it away in a box I also have found that the styrofoam will stick to the lace because I use it stays and I'm not always super diligent about completely cleaning off the lace when I take my wig off. I wipe it down a little bit, but I don't go overboard on it. As a matter of fact, if I, I can put a wig on that I wore before and not use it stays and if I get sweaty and then dry and then like dry off and the sweat goes away that wig will sometimes adhere to me because there's a residual it stays on it and my sweat reactivated it so this is an issue that you may not deal with if you're more diligent about cleaning off the lace than I am but I would find that some of that styrofoam would stick to the lace when I would pull my wig off of the styrofoam head not cool so um, I, I kind of stopped using them for that reason these I feel you have to be really careful with first of all they never put together perfectly I think they're made kind of cheaply and these I can never get these rings to stay on but you have to be really careful when you put your wig on here that you don't bend the lace front or any of the features on the plastic pieces so be very careful how you store your wig on there but I have a favorite way that I store my wigs and for this we're gonna go on a field trip all right everyone we are here in my bedroom and I am showing you how I store wigs that I currently have in rotation so up on the wall next to the bed I have this uh, this contraption it's like an accordion hat holder it, it I can stretch it out a little bit further and so it, it moves like an accordion we used to have our baseball caps on it in the old house and it really wasn't that functional for that purpose and so when we moved in here I was trying to determine what to do with it and I got the idea that I could hang my wigs on it I used to hang my wigs on a towel rack in our bathroom in the old house this bathroom in this house is tiny, super small, too small for this, and so I needed a different solution. Right now, I have a ton of wigs up here. I just pulled all of those off of the towel rack. Don't mind this dog blanket because the dogs jump up on the bed. Uh, just so that I could show it to you. I've gotten really lazy about putting wigs away, and so I had overflowed this rack and that's when I decided to add some command hooks to the wall. So these command hooks are just stuck on the wall. Um, you can get hooks like that anywhere. You can get them at home improvement stores. You can get them on Amazon. I believe probably Walgreens and Walmart carry them. Uh, so 
I just added a few of those and I will hang my wigs on those as well. So you don't actually have to purchase something like this. You could just buy some of these hooks and start adding them wherever you want to hang wigs. They're so functional. I mean, I've got a bunch of jewelry hanging on them in this bedroom. Uh, so definitely I would recommend these uh, as a good solution. And you can either do what I have done. I don't want to shake you guys around too much but we have a teeny tiny bedroom here. Um, you can take the wig and you can just hang it through the wefting just like that, or you can take a laundry hook. I'm a huge fan of laundry hooks for wig wearing, and you can just hang it by the tag or by the nape. So the wefted, wefted wigs, that works really just fine for them to hang directly, but for wigs that are um, hand tied, you definitely don't wanna do that. And so you might wanna go the laundry hook route. And I always have a bunch of extras as you can see right there because I also use them to dry my wigs uh, when they're, when they're after I've washed them. And so I like to hang them upside down and dry them. This method works really well for me because it, it allows the wigs to air out in between wearing and gives me easy access to them. If a wig is out of rotation or I'm not wearing it at currently, um, then I shouldn't take the lazy route, which I am currently doing, and I should take and put that wig away in a box. And here is what it looks like when it's all full. So you could make this a lot more attractive by using those command hooks and more strategically placing them on the wall. Another option would be to install some shelves if you've got a space kind of next to the bed and you could put some wig boxes up there. I've got some up there that I need to work on reviews for. Um, another option is you can store your wigs above doors. So if you've got some of those command hooks and there's that space above the doors, as you can see above the closet door, that is kind of wasted space. You could hang some wigs there and then get a little step stool. So even if you're space challenged like we are, I am certain you could find some solutions. All right, I hope you found that helpful. I hope you got some good ideas. Maybe, maybe you got an idea that you didn't have before about ways that you can store your wigs. Bottom line is, I think as long as you're kind of taking care of them, keeping them out of the open air as much as possible, I think that any storage method that works for you should be fine. I want to back up and clarify something that I said earlier about um, when I store them in Ziploc bags, I really don't like put any packing in between on the cap or cover them with anything. I'm not sure that's the best way to go about it. That's sort of me being lazy, which I can sometimes be with um, wigs that I wear all the time. But, and also because I just recently started storing them this way. When I was storing them in their box, I got rid of all the packing in the box. I just had the box, the netting, and the wig. And so that I found to be the easiest way for me and I felt the box kept it just fine. Now, Going forward, it might be smart for me as and when I get new wigs to keep the packing and to put all that packing in the cap, sort of wrap the cap around it and then put the netting on it and then put it back in the plastic bag. That way you're protecting the lace, you're making sure there's no weird creasing happening on monofilament and those kinds of things. So that might be a smarter way to do it than what I started doing. Uh, again, keeping in mind you're trying to keep the fibers healthy or trying to not you know cause any cold crimping any funny creases or crimping on the either on the hair or on the cap and so however you can store them to prevent that that's probably the best way i definitely think if you're space challenged though finding some sort of tote system if you can afford it or you know if you don't have a ton of wigs you could even designate one of these for each brand so i don't have a lot of henry margot wigs so i have one for all of my henry Margu. And so um, while this one has all my girl mono, I have another one that has all the other Ellen Villa wigs that I own. That makes it really easy for me if I'm trying to decide what wig I want to wear and I know I want a, an Ellen Villa or I know, you know, a certain name that I can just go find that tote and then I can easily find my wig. I do keep a spreadsheet of all of the wigs that I own, partly because I have a lot. And so if you're struggling to determine how to pick out a wig and to remember what you have, 
maybe create a spreadsheet and you could go look at that and say, you know, and you can organize it whatever makes sense. You could do it alphabetically by manufacturer and then by by name, which is what I do. But you could, you know, say these are all the curly wigs, these are all the straight wigs, or these are all the short wigs, these are all the mid length wigs, and then you know you can help yourself narrow it down. So if you know you want to wear a curly wig today, but you're not sure which one, go look at all your curly wigs. So there are ways to keep yourself organized so that you can do this the most efficient way possible. All right, everybody, I, I think I went long enough once again. I hope this helped you. Let me know if you have other questions. I may have one other video in the series, and I think it's just going to be about some basic styling and how to make a wig your own. I know I sort of cover that a little bit in some other videos, but I might just sort of do it in overall um, ways that you can make a wig your own and i think that's going to be my last one so if there is something i have not talked about in this series that you have questions about please let me know put it in the comments send me an email at heywigsister at gmail.com or message me on facebook or instagram and i'll take a look at it and see if it makes sense to do another video in this series or if that makes more sense for a tip tuesday or something like that all right guys Thank you very much for being here. I hope that you get what you need from me. And if you do, please subscribe to my channel. Please like my videos and please share them. Uh, the more my channel gets love, the more it gets recommended. And I know there are a lot of wig sisters hungry for good stuff. So let's help them out. I'll talk to you guys soon.